Hello everyone and in this lecture I'm going to show you that how you can programmatically go from one view to another view. You can see that I'm starting with a default template which only have a hello world written. I'm going to go ahead and add my destination view, the view that I eventually want to go to. So let's go ahead and add a Swift UI view. And obviously this can be any kind of view that you're adding. I'm just going to call it detail view. Let's go ahead and create that. Great. In the text, I'm simply going to write detail view to indicate that this is a detail view. This will be actually my destination view where I will eventually end up. So now the question is from my content view, how can I go to that detail view on a click of a button programmatically? Well, the first thing I need is I need to create a navigation view because if you're doing any kind of a navigation, basically going from one view to the other, you need a navigation view. And then inside over here, I'm going to put a vertical stack because I need a little bit multiple controls. And inside over here, I'm just going to say go to detail view. Okay. Let's go ahead and build our application and resume. And this is our interface, what it looks like. Great. So now what we want to do is we want to click on this button and we want to go to a different view, the detail view. So what you have to do is you have to use something called a navigation link. And I'm actually going to show you multiple ways. Here's the first one. You're going to use a navigation link and a navigation link, you can go ahead and create that, navigation link, contains different overloads. So the first one is the destination and you have to pass in is if it's, this is active or not and then some sort of a label. The destination basically means that where do you want to end up after you click this navigation link. So that's easy because we actually want to end up in our detail view which we just created. Great. Is active is a bindable expression. When is active is going to be true, then this navigation link will become active and it will take you to the destination, which in this case will be detail view. So let's go ahead and create a bindable expression. I'm going to use a state and you can call this anything you want. I'm just going to call this is active and I will assign it false because initially when the page loads, you don't really want to go to the detail view. Let's go ahead and pass this over here. Self dot is active. You don't really need self, but I always add self to indicate that this is a property that I have declared somewhere. The label is the label that will appear for the navigation link. We don't really need a label. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass in an empty text. So because my label is actually the button itself. Great. So let's go ahead and build it again. And one thing you will notice is that if I click on the link right now, it's not really going to do anything. The reason that it doesn't go to the destination view A or the detail view is because we haven't really changed the is active property. So let's go ahead and do that inside the button click self dot is active equals to true. Now since is active is a state property. Whenever you are going to change it to true or false or false to true, it's going to render the body again. And this time when it's going to render the body again, it's going to find out that the navigation link is active is true. When it is true, it's simply going to take us to the detail view. Let's go ahead and check it out. I'm going to go ahead and go to the live mode. And now I'm going to click or tap on go to detail view and you can see that now I'm on a detail view. Now there is one bug as you can see that if I go to the detail view and I go back to the origin which is the content view it actually takes me back again to the detail view. This is a known bug in Xcode and hopefully it will be fixed later on. So this is the first way of doing things but what about if I have to do it a little bit differently? There is another way that you can make it work. If you have a navigation link 
and you will see that it has different overloads. The third one you can see over here is the destination and it takes a tag, a selection and a label. The destination will remain the same which is detail view. Now a tag over here is different from is active because a tag can be any value. So basically what we're trying to do is that we are making sure that if the selection which is a bindable expression is ever equal to the tag value, which is one, then and only then this particular navigation link will become active. So first go ahead and we will also create a selection. You can call this anything you want. State private var selection. You don't really have to call it selection. But this selection value that you're gonna put it over here should be equal or should be comparable to the tag value that you have assigned. So in other words, it will be an integer. And you have to mark it with optional because you can see over here in the selection bindable expression it's a hashable of optional. And you will go ahead and assign it with nothing, basically nil, that's fine. Now let's go ahead and put this self dot selection. And once again, we are not really going to use label because, well, we are not really going to display anything. So we're simply going to pass in uh, empty text. So this is a little bit different from the last thing that we have done or the last one which is simply changing the is active to true. So you are going to use navigation link with the selection and tag if your navigation depends on the value of the tag. Maybe you are doing something where when the value of tag changes to 5 you go to the detail view when the value of tag changes to three, you go to dashboard view. When the value of tag changes to four, you go to some other view and so on. So in those scenarios, you can use the navigation link with the tag and the selection. So now let's see how we can actually make it work. Inside the button, I can simply go ahead and say self dot selection equals to one. So when I click the button, I'm going to change the selection to one. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a try after we have changed the selection to one. Now if I press on go to details view, it works as expected. You can see that I can press on the go to detail view and it simply goes to the detail view. Great. Now, if you had another navigation link, so let's go over here. And instead of going to the detail view, it was simply going to go to a text view and I'm just going to say home screen or whatever and you put the tag over here to 2 then if I click this button and set the value to 2 then it should go to the home screen instead of the detail screen and that's the whole point of using navigation link which is based on the tag and the selection. So let me go ahead and run this again and now I'm going to press a detail view and I go to the home screen instead of the detail view. So it's based on the value of the tag. Since the value of the tag I have specified to be one or two, and by the way, this can be also be a, some sort of an enum value or some sort of a string that's perfectly fine. So whenever I select some sort of or set some sort of a tag value, if I make that selection, which is the bindable expression to that value, it's going to go to that particular link. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility if you have to go to different links or different destinations based on the tag. So now you have learned two different ways of using the navigation link in your Swift UI applications. If you like this video and want to learn more about Swift UI, then check out my course on Udemy Swift UI declarative interfaces for any Apple device. This is the highest rated course as you can see with more than 900 students enrolled. This is around 11.5 hour of content and I keep on adding new content as I learn more about Swift UI. So this also covers MVVM design pattern and a complete coffee ordering app which is integrated with web APIs. You're also going to learn about Xcode previews, forms, models, integrating with core data, integrating with core ML, and much, much more. So if you ever wanted to learn Sophia, and you should because that's the future direction of creating iOS application or Mac application and watch application, 
then start over here. This is a really good course and I'm very, very active on Udemy community also to answer your questions. Now, if you want to get this course, the best way to get this course is there will be a link in your YouTube description and there's our link for all the other courses also. Click on the link, you will get the best discount and I will get the best deal also because if you use my link, my coupons, then I keep uh, the much higher uh, percentage of the revenue. So please use the links. You are going to get the best deal if you use the link. So please use the links in the YouTube description. And I really hope that you enjoy the course. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate and ask, ask the questions in the YouTube forms or on Udemy. And I will be more than happy to answer those questions. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you enjoy the course. If you like this video and want to learn more about Swift UI, then check out my course on Udemy, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for Any Apple Device. This is the highest rated course, as you can see, with more than 900 students enrolled. This is around 11.5 hour of content, and I keep on adding new content as I learn more about Swift UI. So this also covers MVVM design pattern, and a complete coffee ordering app, which is integrated with web APIs. You're also going to learn about Xcode previews, forms, models, integrating with core data, integrating with core ML, and much, much more. So if you ever wanted to learn Sophia, and you should, because that's the future direction of creating iOS application or Mac application and watch application, then start over here. This is a really good course, and I'm very, very active on Udemy community also to answer your questions. Now, if you want to get this course, the best way to get this course is there will be a link in your YouTube description and there's our link for all the other courses also. Click on the link, you will get the best discount and I will get the best deal also because if you use my link, my coupons, then I keep uh, the much higher uh, percentage of the revenue. So please use the links. You are going to get the best deal if you use the link so please use the links in the YouTube description. And I really hope that you enjoy the course. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate and ask, ask the questions in the YouTube forms or on Udemy. And I will be more than happy to answer those questions. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you enjoy the course.